we're just getting organized. We have a list here, we have a list in here. All the to-do lists. This is why I don't like to plan. For the season of life I'm in, this really works. Hello, happy Monday. It is so weird after two weeks of not doing the traditional vlog to be vlogging on a Monday. We're headed to work. Um, I would say we're headed to my speech room, but we're not quite gonna be there yet. First things first, I'm headed to a meeting at another school site. Every once in a while they gather all of the preschool staff and we just touch base. We do have a lot to prep for in terms of the spring because spring is our heavy IEP season with transition meetings and things, which we're gonna talk about and I'll have more details today, so maybe I'll share that after the meeting. But I just wanted to say hi, welcome. I am feeling so cozy, I'm excited. I feel refreshed after basically two weeks off because we had Boston, so Asha, and then Thanksgiving week. And now I am finally headed back in. I don't know why there's crumbs in my belt bag because I always have snacks. I honestly, I'm just kind of enjoying the cozy Christmas vibes in the morning right now. And so it was like, I was like, oh, I kind of want to start the vlog here versus in my speech room, even though nothing of Christmas is in the background right now. But I'm staring at the Christmas tree, so you can just feel that energy. Would you like to see it? We're back. Had a meeting, y'all know. At my meeting, uh, they talked about our transition meetings. Well, they started talking about them and then the power went out. So I'm here about an hour and a half early. Um, so we, I guess, are reconvening with that meeting, but it was just good to like hang, see people I haven't seen in a couple weeks and slowly ease my way back into, into the work day. Today we will plan for the therapy session. I think I have an idea of what I wanna do. I have to double check what core words we're teaching this week um, and all of that fun stuff. So I'm kind of gonna get a little handle on that. We need to find a place to hang this poster from Little Bee Speech. This is all the way from Boston, people. Um, it made it in my suitcase, only a little bit of creases. You know, it actually made it fully, fully rolled. And then I took it out of my suitcase. It rolled onto the bedroom floor and then I stepped on it. Yeah, I love this. It's a speech sound cue poster. Cool, right? Yeah, a little crinkle. Ew. I'm not gonna worry about that. Looking over all of my IEPs for the month of December, making sure everything's in order, and then I have a list of like all the parent questionnaires I need to pack up probably today and send those out so they come back to me in a decent amount of time. And then I'm looking over like, just random dates like I have SLP meetings I have a couple trainings because I'm doing that open access AAC training which I've kind of talked about I don't know just to give you a little bit of insight into what this Monday kind of looks like especially with getting back into the swing of things after two weeks off that's how my brain works I don't know if anybody can relate to that but it's like I need to make sure that everything is here because I'm kind of I'm not always in the same place every day so making sure that everything's on my calendar that needs to be on my calendar has been a huge help. December just gets wild with personal things too. My birthday's coming up, my niece's birthday's coming up, my brother's birthday's coming up. There is something literally every Saturday until Christmas. And with work and like IEP meetings happening this month, there's a lot more than I usually have. So I'm just trying to get it all organized so that way I don't burn out because I want to enjoy the holidays. I love this season with my littles. And so that's kind of where my head's at is like, let's get organized. Let's feel good about this. Let's get everything in place. What I've started doing is I have a home site. All the teachers are doing the same curriculum, but they all adapt it in different ways. But they're all pretty much on the same like letter of the week, you know, um, same concepts and stuff. So I've just been basing it on my home site like talking to them, figuring out what their centers look like so that way I can plan accordingly. And then I just plan whatever, whatever I'm planning here, I take to my other sites. That's like my workaround to like over planning. I don't like to plan, I don't over plan. Anyways, this is my brain on Monday after two weeks off, okay? We're just getting organized. We have a list here, we have a list in here. All the to-do lists.
this week, our word that's going on that core board is uh-oh. So I have a noisy story that I'm gonna do. Pam says uh-oh, I'm gonna show you in a minute. And then I'm going to do this story. You all know I love my Matt and Molly stories. So there's this one about raking leaves and I have a whole lesson for it. I made like laminated cut out leaves and I have a dog, like dog ears and a tail so you can dress up and then you jump in the leaves, you mess them all up. It's really fun and cute and interactive. I'm on the hunt for that right now. Let me show you, here, come with me. I have this noisy story, so at center time, we're gonna do this, cause that's the word, uh-oh. So we'll practice it with this noisy story, which I've linked before, but I'll link again. These are really great for imitation because they have the repetitive phrase. We're gonna learn a sign that goes with uh-oh, and then we get to practice that over and over again. So it's gonna be really fun. And with the story, the story's about a dog jumping into the leaves and messing them up, so we can do uh-oh there. So that's the that's the loose plan for the week. We'll see how it actually goes. We have to find the leaves. I can't do this story without the materials, because mm -mm. I like to be hands-on. One thing I have done is I have reported all my courses for Asha. <laughs> We're winning. Still on the hunt. I have like a whole bin of Matt and Molly. I don't know why they didn't get put back in there. I don't know how much time to spend actually like looking for things right now. Or if I just, if I just do the story tomorrow and then maybe pull out Little B Hive and get some sound practice in with the kids like after I read them the story. Maybe I do that. I just don't like not having like a hands-on story for them. So this is why I don't like to plan. What I found. <sighs> so happy I found them. So basically what this is, they're the little cutout leaves. Can you see them in there? And then there's a dog tail. Dog ears are in here. There's a mat. There's a Molly necklace so we can role play. We got our carpets redone um, over summer break. So my slip and I at the end of last school year were just like, okay, put everything somewhere where it won't get lost. I should have just made sure that it was in this bin, this right here, is my very well organized Matt and Molly bin. Like, look at how beautiful and organized that is. But I think this is, I think this is a good depiction of me because I get told a lot, you know, oh, you have a cute outfit, you look put together. I'm like, great, I look it, okay? I mean, look it. <laughs> but what's on the inside? It's a whole different story. It's like millions of tabs just open. So I'm really grateful right now that I found that. Everything's ready to go for tomorrow now. I haven't talked about these yet. I met this amazing women-owned small business at Asha. It's called Inno Baby, and they have all of these really great things for like feeding, um, when maybe your little ones are working on different like sensory, oral sensory things. They have really helpful tools for kids learning to feed themselves. They also have like really fun fidgets and everything is food grade silicone. It's all this, these are non-toxic bubbles that I've just been holding up, you know, without talking about. Um, food grade silicone, you can wash it. Kids can put them in their mouths and then, you know, we just wash and it's all good or sanitize, I mean. So they have these really cool like fidgets or sensory toys, whatever you want to call them. Um, so I think what I'll do is I will maybe make a little sensory bin out of these and then have that as an option for my kids that maybe need something a little bit extra while we work on the story. I think that'll be a fun option. That's what we're doing this week. Thanks, Inno Baby, for um, helping me have unplanned plant therapy. I am going to clean up this desk and finish a couple more computery things, and then head to the post office to ship some journals. Yay! here backwards walking he's got me hooked we found an old church parking lot and we just come out here and walk backwards because knee health is very important especially when you're over 30. <laughs> good morning and welcome welcome to tuesday from your very tired slp um i am getting ready to have Pete join me at circle time. I emailed pictures of Pete in Boston 
to myself. So I'm gonna pull those up on the computer in there and then when I go to teach my core word and my sign, which I need to double check the sign. So we're doing oops. And I can't remember if it's like this or if it's like this. So I need to double check that and then get everything ready to go in there, teach the sign, read the story, talk about Pete. We'll see how much time I have for all of this. It honestly feels like too much, but we'll see. But I think they're coming, so yay. Well, there were three center rotations today in the morning. We haven't done the afternoon yet. Still time to adjust. Two out of three, they loved, they loved the mat and Mali. The last one was a flap. Basically he said, never mind with the story. Here's a bunch of leaves. Here's a dog puppet. You're each gonna get to take turns jumping into the pile of leaves. And we did that for 10 minutes. We practiced jump. We practiced, uh-oh. Is that how you do it? Uh-oh. I think that's how I do it. Sometimes the session flops. This is why when we have a plan, we are okay adjusting. Okay. Gonna do some billing. Gonna eat some lunch. Oh, because you can wear it like a necklace. Do you want to put it on? I want to put it on. He's tired from jumping into all of those leaves. <gasps> what happened? He's saying yes. He's saying yes. Okay, what's happening first? What's it called? It's the rape. Great. The, the doggy is watching. He's eating the leaves. Doggies don't eat leaves. Hello from Wednesday. I was like exhausted yesterday by the time work was done. I didn't even, the amount of energy I had to do anything, it was surprising. It was surprising that I lasted till bedtime. Um, that being said, feeling much more rested and refreshed today. I always think washing my hair is just such a good reset for me. I don't know what it is, but I feel like my week really starts when I wash my hair. So I may have to change up my showering routine because I just want to feel that way like on a Monday, you know, like today. But anyways, it's Wednesday. Um, I am going from one site, just had a full morning at this site. It was great. I miss these kids. So it was so good to see them. I'm headed to my other one to service um, my one of my individual clients that needs a little bit more services a week and then see the girls, the teachers there, which is always a fun way to break up the day and then head back here. It always makes me feel like I am taking a half day when I do this, so I kind of like that. Um, I was recently having a conversation with some other SLPs about this whole traveling thing and being at a different place, in a different place every day. And I honestly feel like for the season of life I'm in, this really works. I don't, I don't need to be at my home site every day. I like having a little bit of the variation and different things to do every day. Um, so that's been just kind of a good thing. Okay, I'm looking at the clock and I'm like, I should not be vlogging, I should be driving. So, gonna head over there, but uh, see you soon. We're gonna go for a walk in the park. Should we take our bunny or our elephant? I want Oh, you want your yellow bunny? Okay, bunny's gonna go get a drink of water. We're gonna say, ah, mm. good girl. And I like how your air came out your mouth. We're gonna start with your TikTok sound. So here it is. It's like a woodpecker going tut, 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 tut. and you're gonna slide it so we have ta. now slide it tu. Tu. good all right let's see what's next okie dokie just got home and i actually didn't film anything when i went there but we did a trader joe's run really quick because mark and i needed some things for dinner we are on a big kale salad kick and I, we didn't have any more kale or arugula or anything that goes in the salad. So I ran there. So we'll do a quick haul. Um, we got butternut squash. They're in here, they're tiny, super tiny, but um, we love, like I put them in the air fryer, I cube them up and then I put them in the air fryer with a little bit of olive, or not olive oil, avocado oil, salt and pepper and fry them in there. And then we just keep them in the fridge and pop them in salads. So good. Got some of our favorite drinks, rice cakes, 
lettuce, well, yeah, this is lettuce, right? Kale, it's kale. I don't know, I call it lettuce. Goat cheese, because we like throwing this in the salads too. And then guys, guess what Trader Joe's has? I wasn't gonna get suckered into any holiday things, but I got a couple jingle jangles. But what I'm thinking I'm gonna do is I'm gonna keep them because I don't know if we're hosting Christmas again this year. But they're really nice to kind of throw on like the little chocolate covered stuff on your um, Christmas cookie plate. So I'm supposed to do Christmas cookies at some point with my mom and sister this season. You know, we will uh, probably do that. I'm also very aware that I am um, kind of trying to beat beat the dark here because it's getting dark very fast. It's already a very gloomy and cloudy day and I don't know how the lighting is right now. Um, but right now we're just powered by Christmas lights <laughs> and the lamp behind me. This vlog is coming to an end. I did want to end it with a quick reflection for you, something that I was reminded of today. My Wednesday afternoons, um, are some of my busiest. I'm working with a lot of kids that are just very sensory seeking on Wednesday afternoons and also a little bit on Friday afternoons too. Um, and that's great and I love it. I love putting into practice things that I've learned, especially coming back from ASHA. The two things I wanna share with you. First off, coming back from ASHA and after learning so much that I want to start implementing right away with my kids. It's been really hard on me this week to like try from the get-go and also not be too critical on my past self because while there are things I feel like maybe I've been doing wrong as a clinician, um, I am trying to you know just have a healthy mindset around it and not beat myself up because I was doing the best with what I had at the time, with the resources, with the training, everything that I had at the time. But if I'm like really trying to push myself to be more neurodiversity affirming in my practices, be more, um, you know, supportive of my just stalt language processors, blah, 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 like all these things I learned at ASHA, then there's things I need to change, but I also need to give myself time and take things in baby steps, right? I have goals that I wanna tweak and change right now, but I have to make the time to do that and give myself grace and, and roll it out, um, you know, step by step. And so just if you're kind of in the same boat or after a conference, if you have that same kind of thought pattern, just remember like you are one person, you are one clinician, you have to take care of yourself. And yes, change is good. We need to be changing things. I, I agree with that, but we have to we have to be allowing ourselves to do it in meaningful ways and be intentional. And if we try and push ourselves too much too soon, essentially, then one, we can burn out. We can burn our kids out because we're changing things on them too. So just remember that. You can change one thing a day. You can change one thing a week about how you're delivering your therapy or your model or writing goals. Um, so give yourself that grace. The other thing that I was very grateful to have been reminded of today in just a very natural way is that idea of, and I feel like I do this every day, but I don't talk about it. And I, I don't feel like I'm explicitly modeling it enough sometimes for staff in, in the classrooms. The basic timeless strategy of getting down on a child's level not talking down to them. I feel like sometimes it looks like, and it may not be, it may not be intentional, but I see adults talking down to kids, you know, oh, it's time to go. We need to, you know, we need to line up. We need to sit in our chair. And when you do that, well, what it looks like to me from the outside in, it doesn't mean it is again, but it could look like a power thing, right? And I feel like for a kid, it might actually feel like that. And for some kids, it really does. Like they don't wanna follow the rules or do things that they're told to do or, or that things that are out of their routine. And today, um, just I had a moment where a connection was just really solidified with one of my students. And I think it was all because I got down on his level. We had to do a quick change of routine from the playground to class at a different time than normal. And um, instead of, you know, trying to rush him out, you know, to the gate or to the line with the rest of the class, I just got down on his level. I looked at him. Um, I let him know, hey, we're gonna, we're gonna be all done on the playground, we're gonna go to snack. I gave him time to process. So I just was very patient with myself too, because sometimes I'm not impatient, but it's more so with myself. Like, oh, I see the teachers, they, they, they want me to help him and like get him there, and I feel the rush and the pressure. And it's not about that, it's not about them. Like, yes, I wanna help the class, but I'm here for this child. And so I could tell he was kind of overwhelmed because there were all these changes. And he just happens to be a child that loves touch, like loves pressure, loves hugs. He's very cuddly. And he kind of looked at me and I said, do you want a hug? And he just leaned in and hugged me. And I'm, you know, 
when we do that, when we initially just get down on their level, we open ourselves up for that connection, whether it be a hug or whether it be maybe a little bit of eye contact or just be a smile. Like, um, I don't know. It was just one of those things where it was so cool. And so then he, he, I let him choose if he wanted to walk or to jump to the line and he chose to jump and we jumped. And um, I think maybe having that extra movement to get to the line was really helpful. I don't know. But I don't, it, it was just something that I was reflecting on on my drive home. Like I am so grateful for Dr. Cooperson in grad school for being one of the ones that really drilled that into us. Like you don't greet a child, you don't talk to a child like, like this you get on their level. Just like I would want somebody to do for me if I, you know, I'm going like this. Yeah, I don't know, it was just cool. It just really ended the day, you know, I feel like yesterday started off therapy was not going well. <laughs> I think we were all trying to like get back into the swing of things with it being the kids first day back from uh, Thanksgiving break. And I just felt like everything flopped. And then Monday, I couldn't even find my activity all day. Like I just, I don't know, everything was like falling apart. But I think really just, what helps ground me as a clinician when I do feel like like I'm flailing is these moments of go back to the basics, focus on the connection, because then so much can get built on from there. And so it was really just wonderful today to remind myself of that from the get go and then just, fo just be there and be present and be focused. And I'm so grateful for that. I'm so, so grateful for that, especially going into this next three and a half week stretch, now three weeks. Um, because this time in between Thanksgiving break and, you know, Christmas slash winter break, it can always be so overwhelming and so, and the crunch is real, you know, everybody's trying to, I feel like I need to turn a light on. How dark is it? Oh yeah, got dark. We got dark. Um, I am going to end this one here. Mark should be home from work in a little bit. We're going to make our dinner, be cozy, maybe go on a walk even though it's going to be cold. And then I will see you in the next vlog. All right. Have a great rest of your day.